Uh, this next part is uh, probably the most exciting part of the video. I'm going to do some jumps, doing some actual parkour here. Hey, Coach Renee here, and I'm coming at you five and a half months post microfracture surgery on the medial femoral condyle of my left knee. My last video was just 15 weeks and some change post-surgery so obviously a bunch of time has gone by and I've done a few different things. One of the things we're going to be looking at today is a workout that I recorded two weeks ago where I'm just showing you everything that I'm doing from a strength and conditioning standpoint. Some of the things I'll be showing you are things that I was doing pre-surgery. Some of it is stuff that I have started to do post-surgery but they're all things that would help you out if you are recovering from a knee surgery, looking to get back into any sort of high impact sports. But before we get into any of that, I'm actually gonna show you some footage from a bike vlog that I tried to do about a month ago. So this was like mid-September and I went on a 40 kilometer bike ride. So about 20 kilometers and some change each direction from where I live all the way to Lynn Canyon. Ah, hello. Ooh, nice skid, bro. So you can see here, we got to Lynn Canyon, went for a cold dip, did a few jumps. As I mentioned, this was mid-September, so the water was really cold, and this was probably like the last possible day that I could have done something like this and actually somewhat enjoyed it because since then, it's been nothing but rain, and the temperature has dropped quite a bit. So that was a great milestone, a long bike ride, something that I haven't been able to do in over a year. But now I'm gonna take you through a workout that as I mentioned, I did two weeks ago. I thought I had all the audio figured out for this one, but as usual, there are technical difficulties. I had Coach Tom recording this one and we were using a shotgun microphone that we don't normally use. So it worked for part of the video. We have audio for that, but for the first part of the video, it is dead silence. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna react to the silent video and hopefully provide you some good information as we go through it. All right, so here I'm doing some banded knee extensions and these are a pretty simple exercise, but I have not so simple setup. Normally if I was like in a general fitness center, I would try to find the leg extension machine. But here I have some bands attached to our glute ham developer at the gym. In between those sets, uh, I like to do some stretching. So here I am doing a pigeon stretch and making note of the fact that I am actually getting better at this stretch because maybe I wasn't doing it as much before. And when I do the uh, leg extensions, I'm trying to aim for anywhere between 12 to 15 repetitions. So hashtag a lot. And then we got some more stretching. I like to use a, a band distraction when I go into hip flexor stretch. So I feel like I can get a little bit more range when I hook up the band to a post and pull it in that anterior direction there. So I'm getting a nice angle. And then we go back for another set. So I do a total of three sets, 12 to 15, really trying to get a good pump going. And what you're gonna see with this whole workout is just a lot of volume. So I'm still in the warm up. We're doing some glute walks. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit with the glute walks here, how I have the band placed just below my knees, not around my ankles, not around my hips, just below the knees. That's where you're going to get the most out of this exercise. And what you're aiming to do is try to keep your toes pointed forward and try to keep your knees in line with your toes. This next one is, so people call this one shin raises. You're not raising your shin, but I guess, you know, we're trying to Compare it to calf raises, but I don't know, it's like a toe raise. And then we're back to the glute walks again. So I'm doing about like 25 repetitions, stepping each side for the glute walks, and then 25 toe raises for two sets there. I'm not gonna be seeing the glute walks again, but one thing to pay attention there is that when you're doing those glute walks, you're trying to lead with your knee. So you're trying to drive out with the knee so that it stays in line with your toes as you're moving side to side. Here I'm performing 50 body weight squats, which is a lot. Uh, so I do anywhere from 50 to 100 body weight squats before I do anything else in the weight room right now. And I'm, I'm just trying to build up on the volume. Yep, I'm getting warm. And uh, this next part is uh, probably the most exciting part of the video. I'm gonna do some jumps. 
doing some actual parkour here. And most people like to ask me when I'm doing this how it feels. It feels normal. So this is one of those things that I'm doing right now that actually feels totally normal other than that my coordination, you know, isn't quite up to snuff. So I don't have like a 100% stick rate or anything like that. You're going to watch me hit a bounce back on the next set. And I'm not doing a lot of jumps. I'm just doing three sets of five here and obviously a pretty short distance. You can see I'm not actually getting full extension on the jump and that was a miss landing. But the cool thing about the miss landing is actually being able to deal with that sort of awkward position. And again, no pain associated with it. What you're gonna see after this is some skips and the skips are really important for just returning to any sort of dynamic activity. So if you're doing a sport that requires sprinting, running, jumping, you definitely want to be looking at your basic track and field exercises and drills and trying to build up the intensity on those. So eventually I will be doing stuff like running A's, but right now skips are about all I can handle. A nice thing to report about the skips too is that, uh, again, no pain associated with them. But when I was trying to recover for seven months or more before I had my injury diagnosed, I, I did actually have some trouble doing skips and light jogs. Anytime I kind of hopped in and out of extension, occasionally I would feel a little bit of a pinch in my knee. So it's been really, really promising to not have any pain associated with those movements. And now I'm going into uh, just warming up uh, Bulgarian split squats and I don't pack on the weight right away. I'm doing these also off of a, a deficit. So you can see a couple boards underneath my front foot so that I can get a bit of extra range. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into the real audio portion of this video. So this is my first set. I'm using 105 pounds and I believe I do five sets of five on this workout and it feels okay. I'm not, this is not max effort, but it is somewhat challenging, particularly kind of coming out of that hole. But I don't notice too much difference side to side at this point because the muscle in my injured leg is starting to come back. Anyways, that is it for uh, this portion of the video. I'm about to uh, get into the real audio, so take it away, me. I guess I should mention too, like, all in all, I don't necessarily recommend this as an exercise for if you're trying to do some unilateral stuff. I think it would be a good experience for most people to do, to have some sort of elevation and do a reverse lunge and come up just so I get more range of motion in that front leg. From what I've seen, this is the popular like knees over toes guy exercise where you'll load up a barbell and do this. And I can't stand this because like, effectively what I'm doing here is I'm like pushing away from this foot and just leaning back to this foot. So you can effectively handle more weight doing this sort of motion just like forward and back and yeah you're going through a lot of range of motion there that's all good but i don't feel like that's like a functional movement where it's if i'm stepping back watch what happens now i, I come up onto this leg not only that i actually have to lift this back foot to complete the rep instead of oh, the other way <laughs> instead of this we're now leaning onto the back foot again i don't i don't know why that's the prescribed exercise, but that's what I see a lot of. What I'm going to do next is uh, some front squats. Uh, we're going to go into, I was doing five reps for the Bulgarians. I'm going to, I'm not going to put that on yet. I'm going to bump it up to eight reps, but only three sets for the front squats. And I'll try to knock these out a bit quicker. So I'm using, hey, watch your step there. I'm using it. Using two legs instead of one for these, but I am going to do just a quick set with these weights so I'm not jumping right away into that working weight. Here. So we got 145, 
plus the 10, 155 today. So again, this is a bump up from last week. It'll be a 10 pound jump, but it's a, it's a 10 pound jump on two legs instead of one leg. So it should be, should be like a five pound jump on one leg, which is what I meant to do earlier. So it should be fine. Front squats suck. <laughs> so you can see kind of like the challenge of position where like you try to lean forward, but you can't otherwise would drop the weight. Yeah. I might be sort of warm. Maybe we finally reach a level of challenge where I might be sort of warm. So next I'm gonna be doing uh, three, I got three more exercises. So I did uh, the dynamic stuff, my warm up, uh, as heavy as I can, Bulgarian split squats, as heavy as I can squats. And so now everything else is just kind of like isolation exercise or things with less load. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like a, a tri set. I'm not doing, I'm not doing like a high intensity circuit, but I'm just basically not taking rest in between the next few exercises. So uh, first one is a uh, uh, glute, I used to call these glute ham raises, but then you got like the Nordic curl. So the, the, this apparatus is called a, a glute ham developer. So I'm, do, I'm doing glute ham developers, I suppose. And they're a bit different. Cause you don't actually, well, even in a Nordic, you don't want to come up all the way. Like if I go up more, it's just, I'm relaxed. So I'm kind of keeping some tension on there. I actually like these more than Nordics because I actually feel it in the belly of the hamstring as opposed to just in like my tendons underneath my knees. So definitely prefer that to the uh, floor Nordic, although I'll probably be adding those into the program again at some point. Next thing going over to the ladder. I've been trying to be a little slower with them. I really feel like my uh, my left calf is, is lagging and actually this is the, so this is my damaged knee. This is also the same leg where I tore my Achilles tendon six years ago. Yeah, time flies, six years, yeah. So I actually find that, uh, so I did some rehab for that, obviously, but uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't actually think I, I kept up on my calf development as, as much as I could. So I feel like this side has always been weaker. And especially after I spent the amount of time I did recently on crutches, um, now it's super weak. <laughs> so this is gonna be like the most obvious size difference if you look. I definitely have more, more muscle on my right than my left. Can you touch your feet to the floor? Yes, I can. Cause oh, because I, I can't lean back. Oh, that's a whole different game. Yeah, see. <laughs> you even like. Like go under it. Yeah, but it's like it's the hinge. It's the hip hinge I don't have. Cause like, ah. Uh, but see, I lean back. <laughs> All right. So be honest with me. How how small is my left compared to my right there? Well, it doesn't look bad when you're just looking at the left. Yeah. But then when you see the right, it's like. Gah. It almost feels like there's nothing there when I pop up onto my left. I'm just like willing my heel upward. But when I do a right side, it's like, oh, there's, a, I can feel a calf flex in there. Worst case scenario is I get bigger, more defined calves. Uh, best case scenario is it maybe adds a tiny bit to my jump and makes my ankles more stable. Not bad things. Yeah, I forgot to mention on my other lower body day, I do, I do deadlifts. Oh, 
There's no way. Oh my God. Yeah, can't even, can't even finish the set on that side. I've been thinking about this whole like strength training thing and it's like so the goal is to get this leg to get as big as this leg I thought like what if I just like went on a calorie deficit and then like shrunk you know like that would work too <laughs> Maybe, you know, there's two ways to keep balance but I already got this big on one side so I gotta match it up all right that is it for the workout as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't have any pain associated with any of the movements that I did there. However, everything is not perfect. When I put my leg up like this here, so if it's under load and I'm really pressing into extension, it actually feels okay right now, but uh, probably because I've been sitting in this chair for a bit, if I, if I were to get up and walk and really just focus on locking that knee out, I will get a bit of a pinch, but it'll usually subside after a few steps or so, but anytime I'm kind of in a sedentary position for an extended period of time, like if I go for a, a car ride or something and I get up and I take those first couple steps, I usually get some pinch associated with that. I also had a bit of an incident where I was actually on an off week and I was uh, trying to do some back extensions with my, my leg locked into place. And when I got out of the machine, my knee wasn't really happy. So. Other than that, everything is everything is pretty good. I still have uh, some built up, what my doctor thinks is probably like just synovial fluid uh, right at the joint line, um, kind of on the anterior side. And in the posterior side, I still have a bit of a Baker cyst that kind of fluctuates in size. The only way I'm probably gonna get through these things is, is just through rest, but I'm also trying to manage that by at, with adding activity. I don't wanna completely get away from activity and strengthening so I do have to kind of find a way to balance that right now. I think in about a week, I'm probably gonna take another week off or so just to see if I can manage that. Anyways, that is all the information I have for you right now. I will see you next time, hopefully when I hit my next progression, which I hope is actually some parkour. That would be, that'd be pretty cool if, if the next video was a parkour video. All right, we'll see you then. Peace.